Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our conversation on bringing bike sharing to Hartford. Just a note, today's conversation is being broadcast through Facebook Live. Thanks to Tom Zlodnick of the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving and Nelson Laura uh, from the Hartford Public Library. Copies of the video will be posted on the Foundation's Facebook page and copies of the presentation will be available on the BC Co website. So we're gonna get started. So who, so here's a little bit of background on where we're going to head today. Uh, first, we're going to talk about who we are, and I'll introduce everyone who's on my task force from the Leadership Greater Hartford Quest program. We're going to talk about why bike share. Bike, we're going to present some bike sharing models to you. We're going to give you our recommendation based on our research. We're going to share some of the matters that we considered in the parking lot portion of our presentation. We're also going to then have some discussion and um, discussion on overcoming obstacles. And lastly, we'll close and talk about some next steps in the program. So who we are, we, are, we all come from a variety of industries, which is fantastic. First, uh, Sarah Allen, who's going to be speaking right after I end, uh, uh, from Cigna. Doretta Andonucci from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Michael Avicoli from Standard Builders. Charlie Brown from the Central Connecticut Health District. Franco, Franco Guerrera from United Healthcare. Me, Barrett Katuna. I'm from the Junior League of Hartford. They sponsored me to be in part of the Quest program, but I'm the Executive Officer at Sociologists for Women in Society. Vanessa Pergolisi from Goodwin College, who's in the back at the registration table. And lastly, Zach Shuren from Pullman and Comley, who could not be here with us today because he's in trial mode. Uh, so and we'd also like to give a special thanks to Tony Chirolis from the, he's the Transferred Hartford Coordinator from the Center for Latino Progress and the team from Leadership Greater Hartford. Thank you to Julie and thank you to Greg Andrews, who I don't believe I saw here today just yet, but we thank Leadership Greater Hartford for making all of this possible. So thank you. And here is Sarah who will take us to the next direction. Thank you, Barrett. So who in the room drives east into Hartford? OK, does this picture look familiar to you? <laughs> Probably if you're running late and it's 9 AM, it's not as congested as it normally is. But we drive into work every single day, or most of us do. I think Tony here biked in. Is it frustrating to sit in traffic when if you drove an hour later, you wouldn't be in traffic and your commute, commute time would be cut in half. I personally find it frustrating every time I did that commute into Hartford from Manchester. So you could take a day that looks like this and you could make it look like this. <laughs> so that's why we're here today is, is there a better way to not only be healthy for ourselves, for the planet, but really you know make a step towards becoming a more in, uh, integrated community so why bike share we as a task force we started as healthy connecticut and transit and we had differing opinions on what we should do for a project in our task force for leadership greater hartford and the quest program and we said we can be healthy for ourselves and we can be healthy for the planet and bike share was a way to combine both of these ideas into one opportunity for greater good so if uh, five percent of new yorkers that commuted in actually rode their bike it would reduce emissions that are roughly a little larger than uh, the size of manhattan so bike share is good for the planet and bike share is good for people so physical activity is as effective as a structured exercise program. And I think Tony can probably vouch for us as he bikes most places. So why bike share? Since 2010, we've seen ridership increase, and that's you know really almost eight years. And this concept of bike share has really taken off. The number of bikes have increased and the number of rides, from roughly zero to about 30 million now. You may be asking yourself, well, that's great if you think about City Bike in New York City or maybe Seattle or Washington, but we're Hartford and we don't have that. 
Well, these are a list of resurgent cities that are now bringing bike share. So these, sim these cities are similar to Hartford in their size and their demographics, in the fact that people commute in and maybe don't stay as long. So if we looked at you know, what's kind of close to home? How does this make sense for a New England climate that maybe you can't ride all year round? Well, Providence actually is putting in a bike share program and they will be putting 400 bikes into uh, the city of Providence and they're receiving a grant from the Providence Department of Transportation. And the city of Worcester is also putting in 40 bike share racks. They're actually using a dockless system. So you can ride your bike to work or oh, ride your bike to work, drop it off, and then walk somewhere else. And someone could pick up that exact same bike. And so it's not tethered to a specific dock. These are examples of how New England communities have adopted bike share and how we as Hartford can adopt bike share on multiple different scales. So we could go large scale with 400 bikes and 10 or 20 racks, or we could go smaller scale and do a dockless system. So now I'll hand it over to Franco, or Doretta, sorry, and she'll take you through the next part. Yeah, people get us mixed up all the time. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> um, no worries. Ah. Down. Oh, excellent. So we started learning about bike share, um, and we started talking to people. And one of the things that impressed us was everyone that we spoke to said, have you read the Krog study? Have you read the study from Connecticut Transit? You've got to read that one. So Emily, Sandy, it lives. Um, I know when I started work at the Hartford Foundation a year and a half ago, my colleague Scott Gall says we love to do reports and they get dusty. This one is not dusty. It, people read this thing. But a lot of things have happened since that report was done. Um, I want to say I read in the paper yesterday, two days ago, there was an article, there's a 60 more apartments being constructed on Asylum Street next to Black Eyed Sally's. Hartford is growing, stuff is happening, it's coming. Like it or not, Hartford can't be stodgy for too much longer. Um, we have our friends here from Yukon, Hart, Yukon, there you are. Yukon moving downtown has been one of the hottest things to happen. We're really excited about it. We're glad to have our neighbors. Um, attracting lots of attention. If you've met folks downtown, you'll just, you'll feel the energy is, is different. Um, there are conversations about supermarkets still. We're just having conversations. Eventually we'll get a supermarket. That's for the next Quest class. Um, and you can thank our own Charlie Brown for these lovely red um, bicycle repair stations. There are going to be four of them. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> so, so stuff is happening. Good stuff is happening in Hartford, and it's, it's really time. Um, so before I take up too much of your time, I'll pass this off to Franco, the real Franco. Well, that's the only one I need. So. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. All right. So as everyone's saying, we, we started looking into different types of bike shares. So I, I'm just going to kind of read through some notes because I don't want to miss anything because this is really the important page right here. <laughs> All right, so we, we asked ourselves, first we asked ourselves, you're going to have to pardon me, I'm Italian, so I talk with my hands and you might hear me, you know, not hear me. Um, when we first asked the question, what is bike sharing, we found out that there really isn't one answer that fits everybody. Everybody's bike share idea is different. Um, to, just to go through a couple of them. So the first thing was we had third party vendors um, that are attracting a lot, of a lot of attention, programs such as Go New Haven Go, and I think they're here in the audience, um, they're rolling out something with P3GN. So that's kind of like on your top left-hand corner there. Uh, then you have programs like Sims Simsbury Free Bike, Bike New Britain, which are more kind of like a loaner program. Uh, Simsbury has been around for about seven seasons and New Britain for about three. So that's kind of like in the middle there. Then you have a twist on that from Yukon, where Yukon actually has a program where they loan out the bike for the whole semester to the student. So it's not like they get it for a day or whatever. They go at the beginning of the semester, they take out the bike, and it's theirs for the entire semester, and then they turn it back in either when the, you know, the weather gets cold or it's the end of the, the term and they turn the bikes back in. So that's another twist on a bike share. And finally, what we have is what we're labeling like a a micro uh, bike share program, uh, which uh, consists of 
like local companies, city offices, apartment buildings, and even some universities have started these. These are organic programs that have started just because the need is there and they want to be up and coming and have the new product, if you will. So that's what we're going to focus on. So while the regional programs like P3GM, Zaxter's, City Bikes are, are very impressive, we felt that the homegrown initiatives kind of doing their own thing because the need is there was more attractive to us. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Good morning. I'm going to introduce myself again. I'm Mike Avicoli with Center Builders. Um, before I get started and jump into our recommendations for today, and then we're going to move along to, to really a discussion, which is what we thought would be the most important part of the morning for everybody, including us. Um, uh, I wanted to just stress one thing, is that as, was, as Barrett was talking about in the introductions at the beginning, we're a group of professionals who live and work in the region. Um, but none of us work in the transportation industry. Um, so I, one of the things that's been really encouraging for me over the last eight months on working on this is to be able to talk to a lot of you, to do a lot of reading, and I, I think, at least for me personally, I think I speak for the rest of my group, is to really understand um, how many people there are you know, in this region who are extremely knowledgeable about this topic, much more knowledgeable than we are, and also extremely passionate about it, um, which, which was really exciting to me to really kind of learn and understand, um, which I definitely didn't understand when we started this. So, you know, if you're talking to somebody who might say, yeah, bike share in Hartford, that's never going to happen, uh, I think the fact that you're all here this morning, you've invested time out of your busy schedules, which I'm sure they all are, uh, to come here and just be part of this discussion, the intellectual equity that we have in this room right now, I think is too powerful to sort of blow it off. This is going to happen. It's just a matter of how and when. So I thank you all again for coming. It's really encouraging to see you all here. Um, in addition to doing a lot of reading this year and a lot of talking to a lot of you folks, we did feel the need as a group to do something to at least nudge this movement in the right direction um, in our own way. So uh, one of the things that we were really encouraged to sort of discover somewhat by accident and coincidentally as we were going through this was that um, th although the city does lack a formal bike share system, there are a lot of examples of organic bike shares popping up throughout the region and, and also right here in the city of Hartford. So this is a quote um, from the Hartford Current about a month ago from Kevin McCall, who's the CEO of Paradigm Properties, who, uh, whose company recently purchased City Place. Uh, this was a, the article was about um, Paradigm's efforts to renovate the lobby in City Place, make it more attractive to millennials, and um, we were encouraged to see that one of the things they're introducing into the lobby is their own bike share program. Uh, Franco actually works in City Place, and he's the one who sort of just stumbled upon this thing one morning when he was coming into work. Uh, so uh, one of the things I thought was really encouraging about the quote is not only the quote itself, but the timing of it. This article was published in the Hartford Current two days after the article in the Current formally announcing the purchase of the building. So here we go. We've got... Um, the CEO of Paradigm Properties just spent $113 million, I think, to purchase the tallest building in the city. And two days after they announced the sale, they announced that they're, they need to make the lobby more attractive to millennials, and we're doing a bike share. Okay, So two days after they purchase it, what do we do right away? We're doing a bike share in the lobby. Okay, So I, I thought that was pretty powerful, just the timing of it. It's already in place. You can go see it now. So basically what our recommendation is for the, for the immediate future is, is to expand on that. Um, there, there are organic bike share systems. City Place is one of them. 77 Main Street is the other. And um, we really thought that there was an opportunity to, to make that um, a more prolific model in the city um, that's easy to put in place. 
Some of you, I hope some of you are here. We did invite some, some people from some property management companies. So if you're here, you've been invited for a reason. <laughs> um, um, basically what we've done as a group is we've, we've partnered with our friends at BCCO to put together a system called Bike Share in a Box. Um, so if you're thinking about this right now in your mind, you think it's a good idea, but you're kind of saying to yourself, I, uh, you know, either I'm a property owner and that sounds like something that would be good for my, for my property or I go to work in an office building and I would love if they had that there, uh, but I don't have any idea how to get it started. We believe that, you know, we have a, a, a pretty easy answer. So what is bike sharing a box? Okay, the first thing I want to clear up is there is no box. After much debate um, as a group, we decided it probably wasn't something that we could easily fit into a box, but it sounds good, right? It's, it, it's a package. Right, right, right. So, so um, like I said, we've worked with our friends at BCCO, and we've put together basically a basic package to start this in your property in Hartford. Um, you see the cost is up there. What that will get you is two road-ready road bikes. So basically what Bicico is offering to do is procure the bikes at a low wholesale cost and accessorize them to make them more suitable for a, a local bike share program. Uh, they're adding lights, they're adding reflective stickers, they're adding a basket, they're making it ready to go. Um, they're giving us a bike rack, locks for the bikes, um, helmets, and then um, what we've done is we've put together a, a sort of a management kit. So if somebody's saying, yeah, this is great, bike share in a box, but I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to administer that. Um, what the management kit is going to include is uh, a map of the, uh, the uh, safe bike trails in the city of Hartford, um, bike lanes, safe routes to ride the bike, um, cards for the number for the Hartford BID roadside assistance program, which is already in place, which we think is a great thing um, that would really help this program flourish. If there's worry about what do I do if my tenant is out and, and the bike breaks down. Uh, a model waiver form, if anybody uh, thinks it might be a good idea to have somebody sign a waiver of liability before they, they go out into the mean streets of Hartford with this bike. A model sign-in, sign-out sheet. Um, we thought low-tech was the way to go in the beginning to get this off the ground. Um, it's easy to administer. Somebody who is a security staff, front desk staff, can easily loan these bikes out. We also thought it was a really great way to start collecting data on ridership in a low-tech fashion. Um, and, and also just basic program instructions for a property owner to put this in place. So what is Bike Share in a Box going to do other than give us the chance to say that we accomplished something this year, right? There's more to it than that, okay? And there's, there is a long-term vision. So I think the first thing is it gets more bikes on the road, okay? So it, it sort of creates the market for Bike Share. It creates the demand, okay? It gets people talking about it. Um, you know, I think the hope would be that it, it gives property owners a chance to distinguish their buildings from their competition in the city. So if somebody's going to work and they're talking to a friend saying, you know, my lobby has a, a bike share program and I can take it out in the middle of the day to run an errand or I can take it to a meeting that's across town. And somebody else is saying, geez, that would be really great if I had that at my, at my condo or my apartment building or at my office. So it gets people talking. It sort of creates the market for a larger system, which we hope will come in the future. Um, it also educates the public as to how to use a bike share and that it's something available in the city of Hartford. We thought that was very important. And we hope that it will also encourage our friends in the city of Hartford to continue the great work that they're already doing to make the streets um, more bicycle and pedestrian friendly, which we all recognize as was a barrier to something that really needs to, to move along before a citywide system can be in place. So we figured more bikes on a road in a slow, controlled manner was one way to, to help this happen. We're also all very excited about um, uh, the institutions that have come to downtown Hartford, not only UConn, which is the head of this slide, but also Trinity College uh, with their Liberal Arts Action Lab, who I know they're here today. So um, aside from property owners, office buildings, and apartment buildings, we really thought that there was an institutional demand for this. Whoops. 
Thank you. There was an institutional demand for this, um, um, and that the institutions coming to downtown Hartford would be a perfect partner for this program. Again, it's something that's easy to set up. Um, it's something that we think would be a great amenity for a lot of people who live and work in the city. Um, and it's ready to go now. We can uh, give it to you now. So if you think this is a good idea, we have your name and your email address. So um, <laughs> please put a star next to your name or come up to talk to us, grab a business card from one of us. This is something that's ready to go. If you think it's a great idea or you know of somebody who think might be interested, we, wanna, we really want to see some of these popping up in the city of Hartford. We want to, like I said, just nudge the movement in the right direction and um, we know that a lot of people in this room, you know, will do what they can to help that along as well. I'm going to pass it back to Charlie to sort of, you know, wrap, wrap a bow on this thing and hopefully uh, get some comments from, from all of you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Okay, so I get the parking lot, so I'm used to being in the parking lot, so that's good. Um, some of the things that we as a group had considered was, as we looked at bike shares, the problems that we see and always get brought up, you know, so we said, let's put those in the parking lot. Let's actually set those aside. We know there may be issues with safety, the possibility of theft, the theft of bikes, um, helmet use and traffic laws, how people obey and, and actually work within the city of Hartford with, and they're on a bike share. Those are things that our group realized that we could not solve immediately, but we didn't want those to be impediments to actually beginning this process of getting bike shares to grow organically in Hartford. These things exist, we recognize them, but they're manageable risk. Um, also, knowing that the partners that we have um, are gonna continue talking about this, and there's gonna be continued work as we go through. So, um, the Hartford Complete Streets Initiative to be able to allow for more safety on the roads. Um, the CROG Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee meets regularly to be able to talk about these issues. So there's a variety of partners like BCCO, Transferred Heart Academy, the Business Improvement District that's really doing great work in this area already. So we felt very comfortable in the fact that if we put the bike share in the box out there, that it was not going to be falling into kind of a vacuum that there is a support network that exists out there to help support both the property owners and the people that are picking this up and for those people that are actually utilizing it. So this is where you guys talk. So we had our model, you know, where we wanna see in the spring of 2018, the bike share in the box concept really try to get out there and get rolling, really start to get picked up. So over the winter and the fall, um, property managers that are interested can be able to contact this, you know, BCCO and we can actually get this out there. Um, in fall of 2018, we'd love to see the Yukon cycle share being picked up. And ultimately, as we said, uh, having the third party vendor potentially coming in once we've got that system that's starting to build up and the ridership there. So, what we want from you guys is some comment, feedbacks, thoughts, ideas. Where do we start? Greg. Two questions. Okay. Hang on a second, because I've got to give you the microphone, sir. <laughs> well, I have a loud voice. So. Yeah, not everybody has voices like we do. And plus, you've got to get picked up, on the, live, yeah. picked up on the Facebook Live, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, first question is, uh, what's the status of working with Yukon? Have they made uh, an agreement, tentative or proposed or in any sort, to actually in fall 18 create the Yukon cycle share? And second question is, have you approached any of the property owners of new downtown housing? Because they might, it seems to me, they would be a really good place to uh, try this bicycle in the box, one in each of those buildings. Mm -hmm. Who wants to jump on that one? Yukon, Beretta? So, I see my Yukon fans, friends here turning a little pale. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is not a commitment. This is an ask. Um, this is also folks stepping forward to help support. So folks from 
um, Transport Hartford Academy are here. We're here from the Quest program. Um, we're not looking for a firm commitment, but we've had some conversations. I know there's interest. Um, so Cindy, I don't know if you want to respond or somebody else, Yukon wants to respond to what else your thoughts are for. Cindy? Nope. Got it. <laughs> and I'm just, here. And remember, this is just a conversation. Going no, it's fine. Here. So I'm here today um, with two professionals that run our cycle share program. We're from the Storrs campus, and we started a program a couple years ago, and we're really finding that it's taking off on our campus. So um, the conversations that we've had with Doretta and the group is to simply say, our program works on our campus. Our model is really very simple. We have um, 50 bikes now. We loan them out at the beginning of the semester. The students pay a small fee. They have the bike for the semester. They return it back to us before it gets too cold. We have storage indoors, so we shut down the program over the winter. And then when the snow breaks, we rent the bikes out again in the spring. Very, very popular. We have um, an online system by which the students can make their reservation. They have a period of time before they can come and pay. The great thing that we have with our program is Leah runs our outdoor recreation program, and we she is um, also capable of repairing the bikes. So we have that service right on our campus. So we do have some of the portable stations, as you saw um, in the pictures. So we have those located on the campus. Um, but we do have the ability for students to bring their bike back to us. They can walk right over on campus, and we can take their bike back in for them, and we can repair it. So we are very much a um, self-contained little program. The model and the conversations we've had is we really feel that our model is a great model and, and could very well be a good model for um, what I'm going to call it, UConn downtown. So those conversations haven't been had. Um, we are more than happy to be a resource and to share with others how our program has grown and, and what we're pleased with. What I will say, absolutely, um, this millennial generation wants this program. They expect it of us now. We anticipate that we will, there will be a demand for us to continue to grow this program. At, we are opening a new recreation center within two years, and we're planning for the expansion of that program in the design of the new building. So the demand is there. What we feel is, you ha I, I think that we have to look at, and I think this is what you're suggesting, is not um, one model works for everyone. Yeah. And perhaps the way to promote this program and really to kick it off is to look at many different models and bring the appropriate model to the appropriate environment, correct? Absolutely. And so, great. So one of the obstacles we kind of hit as a task force was the initial startup cost, which is why you know, we're proposing the bike in a box just because of the low initial startup cost. Uh, the 50 bikes sounds like that, that would be a, a pretty big investment uh, to make from a, from a city of Hartford perspective. Uh, so that's why we're actually going towards that program, just because the startup <coughs> costs are rather small and somebody can get that going and we can get the word out there if they constantly see bikes riding around Hartford. Okay. Uh, Greg, you had another, the other question was about the property managers and things of that nature. And we have reached out uh, to a lot of property management groups uh, to present this as a concept, uh, as a way to start to build those amenities in for the properties that they hold. Um, and that's what we really looked at as we talked uh, as a group is, this is an amenity that millennials really are starting to come to expect. Uh, when you see the owners of City Place come in and that's the second thing that they choose to do, that tells you that there's an expectation of this. It just hasn't been an expectation of properties within Hartford. Um, so what we're building and what is, is an opportunity to be able to actually take this as a program and make it happen and meet that expectation. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. No, Trinity's first. Trinity? <laughs> okay. okay. Coming back to you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I, I project, I guess. In a, uh, my name is Megan Brown. I'm uh, the director of the new Liberal Arts Action Lab at Trinity College. It's a partnership between Trinity College and Capital Community College. And um, we're taking over the space on Constitution Plaza. And one of the things that we're really interested in doing is working on 
um, getting transportation options from for students who are on the Trinity campus to downtown Hartford. And so we're really interested in learning more about this bike share in a box option. Um, I think bike shares are a great, I, I've, I've used bike shares in Seattle and Chicago, all, all over the place, and it's just a really great way to get around a city. So I'm very bullish on the idea, and we'd love to learn more at Trinity. Uh, I'm excited about the idea of bike sharing in the box, but as a person that constantly thinking about the whole community, uh, there's a sector of the community, especially in Hartford, that are aging, and I think that we need to uh, bring them on board of bike sharing. There's tricycles, and I think there should be an opportunity to have a tricycle in a box. Uh, there are uh, a lot of senior centers and a lot of other opportunities for them to stay healthy. And I think that, you know, I'm all for the millennials, and we are, and I love the millennials, but, you know, there are people that are still living, they are healthy, they are in their 60s and 70s, they just want the opportunity to have access to this kind of opportunity, you know, the mechanics, uh, the directions have to be safe. There are a lot of trails that have been built all over Connecticut. And if there's an opportunity, opportunity to um, move them to those trails to make them safer, I think they enjoy life, they stay healthier longer, and they will be part of that community and they will be likely to invest in and leave a legacy in the future for the others that are coming up. That's my thinking about this. I love it. Tricycle in a box. I love it. And this is why I really enjoy working for Yanil <laughs> at the Center for Latino Progress because um, of the viewpoints that she brings to uh, these type of uh, programs. Um, from our window uh, onto Park Street, uh, I just wanted to echo that we see uh, people that you wouldn't expect to be riding a bicycle, riding uh, the classic Schwinn tricycles with the big basket on the back regularly. It's almost impossible to find and purchase one of those. Nobody sells them. The person that got it really needed it and really wanted it, and they went out and got it. Um, and if some, if you see the edges of, you know, the tip of that iceberg, there are a lot of other folks um, in that community and represented uh, that don't have the opportunity to make that connection to uh, s healthy transportation that gets them more mobility in the neighborhood. So I thought that was, you know, as soon as you said it, I went, oh my gosh, the tricycles on Park Street. So. Yeah, I would just like, uh, and after the question, I just would like to hear from New Haven a little bit and how their program got up and <laughs> started. Not put you on your spot, but you know, I'm just curious myself. Uh, hi, my name is Mike Pinto. I'm the uh, Deputy Director for Transportation uh, for the City of Haven. And Carolyn Lush is the uh, Project Manager uh, beside me for P3GM. And uh, as we roll out uh, Bike Share in New Haven, or uh, as we roll out Bike New Haven, as we now start to actually brand it, um, obviously, we put out an RFP about uh, at the, I guess, the sort of the end or beginning of 2016, and we are now uh, within hopefully weeks away from actually getting the first racks and bikes. The we have the racks. The bikes are actually uh, somewhere across in the Pacific Ocean, is my understanding. Um, <laughs> but they are actually on the way. They are on the way. Um, so we are putting out a. You know, I wouldn't call it a hybrid system, but it's a smart bike dumb station uh, model. Um, there, so we will have bike stations to make the, because part of it is you want to brand, and we, th we think it's important that you, you brand it and identify, and people also know where they can go to get a bicycle. Um, all, the, the bicycles themselves will have all of the technology where in the hub, uh, Holly Parker from uh, NOAA here, who is here, who's, uh, NOAA is providing the technology and the, and the app that will actually drive the bike uh, or drive the, the technology. I'm more than happy to show you, the, you know, my phone later on and we can sort of walk through it. 
Um, so you'll basically go up to a station, scan the, scan the uh, you know, a QR code on the back of the bicycle, and, in, and there's a smart lock system that will then unlock. Um, obviously, you'll have, set up a, you know, you'll have set up an account. Um, you get the bike for a half an hour or 45 minutes. I forget what our initial uh, plan was. Um, and you take it back to, and you can take it back to any other station. There's a chain that will actually be welded to the bike, so you then uh, attach that through the smart lock system. The smart lock system uh, immobilizes the the back wheel, and then the the chain actually locks it to the uh, to the to the station. But all of the technology, we'll be able to track the bikes. So if all of a sudden the bike is going 60 miles an hour up to Hartford, we will uh, probably call the Hartford PD and ask them to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, ask them or, to assist us. Or, and, or we uh, recognize welcome. that the Flash actually does ride a bike. <laughs> um, so we, so we're about to a couple of weeks away from rolling it out. After you know, this is a fairly long and extensive process, um, but I think we have a good system to roll out to start. And obviously, you know, two years ago, everyone was basically doing dock stations, smart dock stations. Um, whereas almost all, you know, DC basically who started this and you know, got us all started on this. Is, is now basically opening up and it's become you know, half a free-for-all, as has Seattle. Um, so we will see where it goes you know, five years from now when, our, when the contract with uh, P3GM is up for renewal, it's gonna be a completely different, uh, system, uh, you know, a completely different situation, undoubtedly. Um, I don't have to put you guys in the spot. <laughs> um, what else can I tell you? Well, I'm just gonna, one, just one more question. Sure. Uh, we, so we have, because Connecticut has a uh, helmet law for people under 16, we are not allowing, you have to be at least 16. Um, the, the Seattle uh, system sort of crashed and burned because of a helmet requirement. Uh, the, the finances just didn't work and the, the, uh, the, the, so the practicalities of it sort of doomed that initial Seattle system. Um, even after they had pumped millions of dollars into the system. Um, and they basically said, you know, we can't continue to subsidize it that way. Um, so we are not requiring helmet, we're not requiring helmets. Obviously we strongly encourage it. Um, the safety issue for us is gonna be our department, transportation, traffic and parking, is committed to expanding the safe cycle routes through the city. Uh, we have opened the Long Wharf, the Long Wharf Drive, uh, cycle track a mile and a, uh, a little under a mile and a half uh, along Long Wharf Park, um, sort of parallel to I-95 going through through uh, the Long Wharf section. We are at the final uh, approvals for from OSTA. We have all the city approvals, um, but we are going through the final approval process for a two-way cycle track for Edgewood Avenue, which will take the which will connect the downtown. Uh, from part, basically it's two and a half miles from downtown to uh, the Edgewood neighborhood uh, or the uh, Westville neighborhood along Edgewood Avenue. And that will be a two-way cycle, uh, two-way protected cycle track. Um, and we have now funding for a Harbor East Trail uh, for, that will connect where the Long Wharf pick, drops off and then out to, the, with, a, with any hope, with any luck, it will connect all the way out to Lighthouse Park and then an east-west connector along East Street. So the safety aspect will be increasing the amount of protected cycle, uh, cycle tracks and just the overall awareness as we go, as we move forward, making a commitment to that. Thank you. Uh, well, Mike, you had a comment no, and then Holly. Holly. Okay, let Holly talk. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'm Holly Parker. I'm with NOAA Technologies. Um, before I started working for NOAA, I was Yale University's Director of Sustainable Transportation Systems. And I brought Zagster um, dockless bike share to Yale. Um, we're now the technology provider for Yale's um, next generation of bike share, as well as the technology behind New Haven bike share. And um, to the point about tricycles, which is a really great point, um, NOAA's technology is is bicycle agnostic, we like to say. So basically, you can put our, our lock system and uh, tracking system on any bicycle which makes me feel like you know, your sort of s slow progressive concept of starting with bike share in a box, you know, just really working with people who are very committed 
to bringing bike share um, to the community is, is a great one to kind of dip, dip your toe in the water. And as it expands, you could certainly put our technology on you know, any, any bikes, any fleet of bikes that are you know, in disparate locations and um, be able to track the bikes in real time. And what's also really important about that is the maintenance and rebalancing aspect of bike share is, <laughs> is sort of um, not to be taken lightly. Um, the rebalancing itself um, can account for more than 50% of the cost of a bike share system. So to have like a really, really smart management system of the fleet in the background is, is, is super important. And um, it, it really bears bringing in someone who has experience with that and, and a good you know, software to manage it um, efficiently. Um, so just want to make that point. Thank you. Thank you. Should we go to Sandy next? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm Sandy Fry with the City of Hartford. And I just want to make uh, a couple points. One is I think the city and our department has been very intrigued by bike share because what bike share really does is it enables the average person to imagine a bike as a realistic means of transportation. And that's a really big thing to have happen. And um, I think from the Boston example, they jumped into bike share before they had jumped wholeheartedly into their bike facilities investment. They had a plan in place and then they were able to implement that shortly after the bike share. What, what we need in, in Hartford, in, in some ways, is the evidence that investment in bike facilities is a reasonable thing to do. Uh, because that is, even though we have a complete streets law, there still is some pushback on that concept. So timing of things is very good in that we are developing a bike plan which will be complete by next summer. So we'll have in place the ideas of where we need to make investments. And I think bike share being implemented maybe earlier than spring of 2020 in a bigger way will really enable us to sort of leapfrog to those goals that we have in terms of being a multimodal city. I have been sort of a skeptic in a lot of ways because the city of Hartford is not positioned in a way that we can make a large investment in either the capital or the ongoing operating cost for bike share. And what the Krog GHTD study had pointed out was that you got to subsidize it. This is like transit. There's a subsidy required. What we're really encouraged by is some of the newer systems that are coming online and the NOAA technology would be one of these, Lime Bike, all the, the variety of bikes that are pouring out on these sidewalks of um, Washington, D.C. offer a model that seems more attractive to a community like Hartford that really cannot invest in bike share. And if we are thinking about those kinds of things that we want to ask our corporate community to sponsor and invest in, bike share may not be at the top of that list. That may not be where we want to spend that capital. Um, and so I'm really encouraged by the new models, the new pricing models that are more like transit and appear to offer systems that, that could be implemented with, with no financial commitment on the part of the city. I think that that makes sense to us. And so your motto, maybe we, we move that um, spring 2020 back uh, and could actually have uh, a ubiquitous bike share is what I would like to see in shorter time. Uh, yeah, just, sorry. Sorry, we just, just trying to be. <laughs> Love the enthusiasm. Go ahead. Hi, um, my name's Ann Hayes, and I'm the director of parking and mass transit for travelers. And we have about 7,000 employees in downtown Hartford. And uh, we have a very active employee cycling network. We have about uh, 35 employees who regularly ride their bikes to work. Um, we offer alternatives to, uh, to parking. Uh, we charge our employees for parking, and about 20% of our employees use mass transit. And we were actually named a um, bicycle-friendly business 
um, by the League of American Cyclists um, a couple years ago. So I, I can't commit on behalf of the company, but I think we would definitely be interested in looking at the concept of bike share in a box because we do have employees that are, that some live downtown, uh, some walk to work, some already ride their bikes. I think being able to offer this as an alternative might be something that our employees would be interested in. And, you know, we'd have to work through the safety concerns and things like that, but um, I, I, think that, uh, I think that we'd at least be interested in looking at something like this um, on the manageable scale that you've described it here. So, thank you, Anne. Thanks, Thanks. Anne. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I counted two. Okay, back um, up. Hi. Okay. This is sort of in response to um, the City of Hartford um, comment about the funding to explain a little bit about um, the the P3GM managed system in, in New Haven, how the funding works for that. Um, we, we are not receiving funding from the City of New Haven, so um, we have a, a three-part strategy where uh, a third um, of the revenue will come from, you know, just user fees, um, revenue from you know, whether it be single use or memberships. And then a third comes from um, sponsorships uh, that we develop, you know, whether it be a title sponsor or, um, you know, having their logo on the bike. And then another third is um, advertising, which goes on the solar ad panels that go with all of our stations. Um, so that is sort of the model that we have developed. Okay, thank you. Um, yes. Uh. Hi, I'm Donna Zdanis from JCJ Architecture, and we do have a very small bike program. We have eight bikes, and some of the problems that our um, employees have voiced are the lack of secure bike paths. In our area in Coltsville, there are some beautiful paths to the water, and you have to go under the bridge and past locked gates to get there. So, I mean, I think starting a program with identifying the bike paths, because I'm finding it very hard to find that information online for our employees. We try to provide all that information on the intranet, and it's very difficult. Um, so providing you know, the bike paths, uh, safe areas, educating drivers about the bike laws, I think, is key. I think most of the bikers understand about the laws, but I've seen how drivers treat bikers who try to share the road with them. I think that's key. And then working with area employers such as ourselves, because some of us can provide some bicycles and would love to work with you and, and work together to provide a, you know, a program in that, that way. And, and thank you. And, and that was one of the things that we found was very attractive with, with kind of our partnership as we came in with, uh, with Bicycle was, and Tony especially, is the fact that we did recognize that these are challenges that we have to deal with. Uh, but having that community, you know, being able to help support, to be able to provide things like the bike routes or identify that that's an issue and work together to be able to put that in as part of the package, that became very attractive to us. Uh, in addition, you know, one of the things and why we thought about this organic bike share and building the ridership within the city is because as we get more bicycles out there, it's going to become much easier to educate the drivers because they're going to have more opportunity for interaction. So the, you know, and hopefully not interaction, <laughs> but to actually see it out there to where it's not a rare occurrence. But without throwing a thousand bicycles out there all at once to inundate the system, to be able to grow it in a rational way to where people would actually become used to it. Tony, I know you got something to say. <laughs> um, I, I have a million things to say, but I try to keep it very short. Um, the, the really interesting thing was this, this, uh, this team met with so many different uh, institutions, partners, potential partners, and just people that they thought might be interested in bike share. Uh, one of those uh, groups was Riverfront Recapture. And I know exactly the gate you're talking about. Uh, the, the really interesting thing is, is how well Riverfront Recapture is starting to link together those riverfront um, trails and resources and connections back into the city. Uh, that connection is one that is under consideration for a uh, 
a entrance that is more formal with a sign and a path um, and a small amount of parking associated with it so it can act as a trailhead that connects to the Coltsville area. Um, and I won't put uh, Sandy on the spot, but there's uh, thoughts of how to better connect downtown to the, the Colt Park area. And those discussions have already been happening um, and are part of the bike route plans that the city has uh, that exist. And the challenge now in that aspect is uh, pulling the funding in to match uh, those routes and, and those really inexpensive efficient uh, improvements to our transportation system that'll better connect our neighborhoods. So, and, and I love that this got a bunch of different groups talking to each other. More? Sorry. We're gonna skip around a little bit, y'all, okay? Thanks. Hi, I'm, I'm Nancy Benben, I'm with the Hartford Foundation. So, you know, the momentum that's building in this room and the interest around this program is, is really gratifying. So you all are, have done an amazing job as part of your Quest program, and I know graduation is just around the corner. So how do you pass this baton on? What's your next step so that the momentum that we see here and outside of this, these walls continue and this program does continue? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I think that was something that we identified as, as fairly important fairly early on in the process. Um, you know, I think first of all, at least speaking for myself, I, all of us aren't going away, okay? So um, I feel passionate about this enough to donate as much of my free time as I can to, to help maybe with next year's uh, Quest class or others that are interested, but it's not, it's not like this is dying in, in three weeks, okay? Um, but I think that was also, um, you know, one of the reasons why, and, and um, Center for Latino Progress and, and BCGO have been just so great through this whole process. Um, Tony really did a great job at sort of, you know, giving us a crash course in, in what, what this actually could be in, in, in a place like Hartford. Um, but we, and I, I don't want to call it a partnership, but I think it is a partnership at this point. I mean, I, I think we identified the importance of building that partnership early because they're not going anywhere either. Um, um, they're doing some great things in the community on their own. They were doing it before we were here, and they're going to be doing it after, you know, us as a Quest class graduates. Um, so to, to sort of... Um, you know, hopefully have them be the sponsor of Bike Share in a Box. Uh, one thing that I stepped over on in my part of the presentation, and I apologize for that, is the maintenance piece of it. Somebody brought up uh, the maintenance as a concern. So somebody might say, yeah, that's great. What happens if my bike breaks? It would be great if there was a community-based bike repair shop in the city of Hartford. Guess what? There already is, okay? It's at BC Co., and that is one of the things that they're prepared to offer as a package is like a regular inspection and maintenance program for bike share in a box owners. So we definitely wanted to give this thing some legs after graduation, recognizing that that was definitely a concern. And, and you know, we, we think that Center for Latino Progress uh, and BCCO will be that foundation for this part of, of the movement. Right, and, and the thing is is that we, just like Mike said, we want to give it some legs, but there's nothing to say that this can't pick up steam and get to the next level. Uh, that's why you all are here. I mean, don't let this you know, end with just this, this meeting that we're having today. I mean, that's the whole purpose is get everybody together, everybody talking. Uh, you know, the thing that I learned, one of the things I learned through this Quest program was we went through so many uh, exhibitions or so many they brought us all around Hartford showing us different things and I remember the one where we saw in that um, it was like a, a studio thank you where they brought folks in and the two w didn't even know they existed until they brought them together and they're like oh you do that too oh my goodness you know it's kind of like you know the, the light bulbs are going off marketing thank you so that's the thing it's like part of this I learned is if you bring people together they will start talking, and if there's a common interest, common goals, it'll get done. So that was one of the primary reasons we had this, uh, this meeting today. So, so. don't leave today.
without making a new friend, yep. without sharing your business card, without asking some questions about what they're interested in bike share is. That would be ideal for us. Um, because once again, we believe as a group that we can build this organically until that system-wide approach is ready to come in, whether that's a year from now, two years from now. I think that there are mixed models between the small bike shares in the box, the large systems can all work together in harmony. And that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, let me just introduce myself. I'm Greg Andrews from Leadership Greater Hartford. So I'm going to be working on the inside to pressure Julie Connolly to try to make sure that one of the next Quest task forces next year will help carry this on. Because this is the kind of community, this is the kind of community involvement and activity, citizen participation, that we need so much more of. And the reference to um, a session in which people in the city involved in marketing didn't know each other and weren't talking is another example of how we need to pressure the major players and back it up with participation to create the kind of uh, in the initiatives, the interest, the program that really gets the story of Hartford out and improves the aspects that will make this a better city. Marketing downtown and marketing the neighborhoods is so vital, but it's defective. So that's something important. Another thing I wanted to say is that I don't think Julie and I have ever seen a Quest task force uh, superior to the work you've done. Really, uh, you are the equal of any task force. And it's so impressive that you have committed yourselves to this really wonderful idea that has tremendous potential. So kudos to you. And I hope that as many of you will continue to be involved as you know we are at Leadership Greater Hartford trying to help you. And I'm really impressed to see the players here who are coming from many different vantage points. And they're here because they're interested and they would like to see this happen. And I hope that as you all have said, that they will be part of the solution too. They will be continue to be involved, offering you advice, support in whatever way possible. The fact that there is an opportunity to make this a system that doesn't require any financial support from the cities is just amazing. And that may be the biggest factor that will help move this along uh, of any that, that I've heard. So well done. Thank you. So my, uh, what I would like to say is, is that this room is full of people who love Hartford. Uh, who think this is an interesting or great idea, and in some cases may, within their organization, be part of implementing the, the very near-term uh, bike share in a box uh, that's already been adopted by a lot of apartment buildings, building managers, and organizations uh, in the region, and, and it's not hard. Uh, you get a... I was, I was brought this by Doretta, who put together our very first management kit. Uh, that is about 85% done. It will be 100% done when you receive it. Uh, the uh, bike share in a box that we have costed out is listed in here with all of the accessories that we think are important for that system. Um, and, and the way that I think uh, we need to think about problems and fixing problems and doing smart things um, in a city that may have a reputation for taking things very step-by-step uh, uh, step, uh, is, is to, uh, in some cases, when the answer is obvious, easy, and low cost, uh, my favorite four letters are J-F-D-I. You can figure that out. Um, <laughs> But that's the kind of solution that we have uh, put together here uh, ahead of some things that take a little bit more planning, uh, thought, um, and you know, signatures uh, at several levels of bureaucracy. So this is a JFDI solution. Uh, if you're interested in it, uh, come and chat with myself, uh, with jo Joseph Dickerson here, the BC Code Program Manager. Uh, we'll get you more information about that. 
if you're just interested in transportation, there are 10 other Transport Hartford action teams around transportation topics. This is one that we helped support uh, this summer into fall. Uh, so check out that list, get in touch with if, if any of those, including this one, catch your fancy, because we'd like to help provide in partnership that continuity that keeps this idea moving forward in our role as BZCO, Transport Hartford, and the Center for Latino Progress. So we'll stick around. Just do it, right? Just do it. <laughs> uh, my name is Scott Mullen. I uh, want to piggyback on the comments I heard about the energy in the room and the focus in the room. This is, I'm, I'm with Lime Bike, and we are a dockless bike share provider. I'm based out of Boston. We are a San Mateo, California-based company, currently operating in about a, a dozen cities across the country and about eight um, college campuses. Seattle, Washington, D.C., some of the big boys, right? Dockless is the future. Uh, and we're, we're really at the beginning of it. Hartford has always been on my radar. Um, I am based out of Boston, working on New England, and I wanted to launch a pilot here at no cost to the city as people are talking about. Uh, I wanted to do that before I came into this room. Now I really want to do it. You have gathered everybody. The private dock share, uh, private dockless companies, I used to work for Hubway. I was the general manager of Hubway in Boston for the first two years. Um, the evolution that has happened since 2011, uh, clearly this is a future. It's a rocket ship. It's going straight up. Um, I can make it rain bikes, right? We're now VC. We're not a government contract and sponsorship based. I'm not going to rain bikes where there isn't fertile ground. And I, I sense that there's fertile ground here in Hartford. I brought a bicycle with me today. Um, I didn't bring it in here. I didn't think security would let me, but it's on the curb. If anybody wants to test the technology, just kick the tires, literally, uh, and see what it's all about. Just come talk to me. Thank you. Thank you for that type of commitment and interest. Oh, question. Um, after your comment, I'd just like to transition into what are people's questions or further comments about bike share in a box? I, I was gonna like just going back to to Hartford. You know, ten years ago, I was a skeptic on this too. I mean, people were talking about, and people in New Haven, sort of like earlier. You know, we were talking about like, well, we need more bike infrastructure. I'm like, well, we, I'm like, we don't need a bikeway. We need a subway. You know, and people were talking about, what well, you know, or a light ra light rail system. And people were talking about like, well, you know, in San, you know, San, uh, um, was it, what was it? It was like San uh, San Fernando or San. Santa Monica, maybe I forget what exactly which city. But they're like, you've got all these bikes. I'm like, yeah. In San Fr in uh, in Santa Monica, it's like 65 degrees in January. It's 25 degrees in in New Haven. But looking around over the you know over the course of the last decade, just watching the organic development in New Haven. Obviously, we have a very large university downtown, and we've had a so we've always had a large downtown uh, population, and it's it's only exploded over the last you know over the last uh, decade. But that is, it, but I've watched that change where people are riding. I mean, my colleagues ride in from Westville, you know, the, the neighborhood I live in. You know where where the uh, the cycle track will go, and that will have that that infrastructure is going to have it, for the first time in the state will have, and the reason it's taking so god awful long is because OSTA has never seen a cycle phase for the cycle track. There will be a uh, there will be cycle a cycle phase, pedestrian phase, and and car phase. So the cycles will all go at once, and it's going to be a fantastic. Um, so I've been convinced over the last decade, just watching this organically develop, that this is the future. I mean, people, as people have been noticing, and people noticed, noted ad nauseum today, that millennials demand this stuff. People who are young, you know, 10 years younger than I demand it, and, it's, and they simply expect it. I went to college in New York City, and riding at the time, in 1992, bicycle messenger was the single most dangerous job in the city. <laughs> There is, n there is no street traffic, there's no car traffic in Times Square anymore. It's gone, it's just, they eliminated it. They have built, if you can build pr curb protected bike lanes in, on 2nd Avenue in New York City, you can build it anywhere. The third most, the, the third most uh, protected bike lanes in the, state, in the country are in Minneapolis. I think it snows a little there. This is, yeah. these are, yeah. and because of the challenges they face in Detroit, 
They will, have, they will have, and granted they have a lot, right now they have a lot of extra capacity on their roadways, but they will have the third most protected bike lanes by next year because the investment that Detroit, the capital for cars has, has, has made. And that's, this, this is it, this is the future, mass transit and alternative transit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right, these, I mean the, the examples go on and on. I mean, it's like, it's doable, yeah. people have figured it out. You know, we're, you know, we just gotta, you know, the land of steady habits, it's one, you know, that's great. You know, we're methodical here, but you know, we can also, we can also learn from what other people have done. I, I think that was one of the most important things that we learned as a group this year. Um, you know, at least speaking personally, I, again, as I said earlier, I didn't know much about this at all when we started. Um, you know, so when I thought of bike share, I thought of city bike in New York City. And um, I think one of the most important things we learned was that, you know, not only, you know, what we thought this was, this was a perfect time and place to start something like this because there are so many things changing in the city of Hartford, you know, even since that Krog report was completed, I think in 2015. It, the city is a different place right now. Um, but also, and, and Doretta's done a really great job at keeping my email inbox full of articles to reinforce this, um, but, um, you know, not only are things changing rapidly, we believe, in the city of Hartford, um, but it, 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 all the comments they've really, really reinforced this for me is that, you know, what you define as a bike share is changing so rapidly. The technology is changing. There are these organic programs already in place. So you don't need to just have city bike. Um, you know, and, and I think sometimes it's, it's important to kind of step back and try to see the forest through the trees is that, you know, we formed as a task force, we were two task forces that combined because we weren't large enough to, uh, to, to be individual task forces. One wanted, was interested in, in public health issues and one was interested in uh, transportation issues. Mm -hmm. So we combined into one task force and I don't think it's purely coincidence that we landed on bike share because bike share is, is a perfect program that addresses both those problems. So. You know, you don't need city bike to call it a success. What are we, what are we doing? What will bike share do? It's going to ad hopefully address traffic issues and transportation issues. It's going to lower the parking demand in the city of Hartford, which I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with. And it's going to make an improvement on public health. Um, you know, to bring it back to bike share in a box, we think that one of the more powerful aspects of, of sort of rolling this thing out more organically and slowly, and to sort of back up what, what Sandy was talking about is, she, she thinks it's a great idea, but she needs more evidence, and she needs to see more corporate involvement, and she's worried about the cost, and you know, we do recognize those. Um, I think doing it in this fashion is, not only is it something that, we, you know, is evidence that this is, that there's demand for this right away, but it also gives us time to make sure that when the city, not if, but when the citywide system is in place, because I'm sure it's going to happen, is that it's, it's right for the city of Hartford, that it is more equitable, um, that millennials are demanding it, but it's also available to, to, to people who you know, might not be a millennial, uh, or maybe don't have a smartphone, right? Or, or you know, maybe can't afford it at the full rate. So these are all concerns I think that you know, still need more exploring, obviously, um, but getting more bikes out on the road in the interim is not a bad thing. And I, I think we all recognize that, and I think that's what we're trying to, uh, to reinforce um, to all of us in the room here as, as, we, uh, as we close. Right. So any other comments on the bike share in a box? Scott? I just had a practical question. I, it was partly because of the comment the gentleman from Line Bike about bringing the, the bike inside through security. I was going listening to this and I was like, oh, this is cool, this is great, we should do this for our building. But then it was like, our building is closed after five o'clock, it's closed on the weekends. I don't know if the security people, would they, would this enable people, uh, how accessible would this be? You know, would you have to work in the office building? Would they work with people, you know, who, could you come in off the street and take a bike out? So just kind of, could yeah. you talk through like how in practical terms this sort of vision would work? Um, one of the things that we had looked at was, uh, as this bike share in a box, is, is because it's adaptable to the specific circumstances of your particular property. So if it works for your employees and your employees are the primary audience here, then it works from that eight to five, uh, giving them the opportunity to have a bike when they're there. Uh, in properties like 77 Main, um, it may be something that they have 24 seven uh, have access to. Um, so the adaptability is really what we had looked at in this is because uh, each property can take it, take the basic template and what we're providing and then adapt it 
to their circumstances. So that's one of the attractive natures of why we wanted to start it in this way. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, and, and I don't believe they're here. We had invited some folks from, from Paradigm, the folks at City Place, to be yeah, here today. Exactly, she had a conflict. And, but basically, uh, Paradigm, uh, they, they did the same thing. They started with the small, they currently have two bikes uh, ready to be loaned out. But what they also did was they also expanded their uh, bike uh, area to include a, a little fix station, a little pump, uh, something to help the bikers. You know, if they, they come to work with a bike, and all of a sudden there's a flat, well, they've got a pump there. They've got all of the resources so that you don't kind of like feel like, you know, if something happens, I can't get home tonight or something. So they've expanded that. And as Mike said, and in the paper, two days after they bought the building, they're already thinking bike share. One of the things when I spoke to the, the, the folks there was, uh, when I asked them, why are you doing this? And said, well, we own other properties in other cities and we found it very successful, so that's why we're doing it here, because it is successful. And they, they, they inc encourage that and they want to do that uh, in Hartford. So. But to answer, I think, one of your, one of your other questions is the, the model that we're presenting is, is something that's not open to the public. So it's really an amenity specific to that building or a property or whatever it may be. So, you know, and it's something where you're leaving either, whether it be a deposit or an ID or something like that, that type of checkout system to, you know, to make sure that the bike doesn't take a vacation somewhere, so. Okay. Uh, any other comments, thoughts, ideas, funny jokes? <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, so thank you all for coming, and we'd really love to stay in touch with you. Um, many of you have met Vanessa back at the registration table. If you haven't left your information there, please make sure you do so. Um, you know, so thank you for taking part in the conversation. Please do definitely stay in touch. Um, copies of the presentation will be available through the Center for Latino Progress website and the Transport Hartford Program Facebook page. Uh, thank you again, and we'll be here afterwards to, to talk more with you all, and check it out again on Facebook Live. Thanks so much.